Hello everyone and welcome to RSGIS Home. And this particular video lecture is a free demo lecture for you all on a topic that is chosen from the general aptitude part of GATE syllabus. My name is Rajat Sit and I'll be teaching, I'll be actually your English instructor for the general aptitude portion of your GATE paper. And at this particular platform that is known as RSGIS Home, we believe that a strong command of the English language is very very essential for success in various competitive exams including of course get <coughs> it not only helps you to tackle the verbal ability section but also it plays a very very crucial role in comprehending in analyzing your questions across different domains right so in this particular video series youtube series we will dive deep into the intricacies of the english language focusing specifically on the general aptitude section of the gate paper and we will explore topics such as reading comprehension, vocabulary, grammar, and you know, logical reasoning, equipping you with the necessary tools to excel in this particular crucial segment of the exam. And together, of course, we'll conquer the general aptitude section of GET and we can unlock new opportunities for you. Thank you, everyone, for choosing RSGIS Home as your learning partner now. Get ready to elevate your English skills with me and so to new heights. Now in this particular video, uh, we shall be looking at the noun specifically as you can find in the uh, very uh, front page of the presentation. Okay, and it's different types as well. So what are we waiting for? Let's dive in. Now, first of all, we have to understand what noun is right so first thing first what exactly is a noun well simply put a noun is a word that represents a person a place a thing or any kind of idea and they're like the building blocks of language helping us to create sentences that make sense right so without nouns our conversations would be pretty confusing right and you know nouns have different functions as well nouns have uh, different jobs in sentences and one important role is being the subject of a sentence right so subject is very very important part of a sentence and they are actually nouns are the main doers or the main things that the sentence uh, is all about right and then we have object nouns also that receive the action in the sentence. They are like the receivers of the action, if you will. Right? So, noun is very, very important part of a sentence. Now, what are the types of nouns? We can talk about them bit by bit, one by one. Uh, we have got common nouns and proper nouns here. Common nouns, what are common nouns? Common nouns are the everyday names we use for people we use for places things or ideas like you know dog like city okay here you can find two examples and uh, of course happiness is also a common noun so they are not capitalized so to say just like all regular words on the other hand there is proper noun proper nouns are specific names for individuals for places for entities think of john okay paris coca cola so proper nouns always get a capital letter because these are specific names for specific things or specific peoples right then we shall come to the next kind of a noun that is concrete noun so get ready for a sensory experience here concrete nouns are all about things you can uh, see you can touch you can hear you can smell you can taste right so they are the tangible objects in our world you can think of the words like tree here i have given you some examples in the ppt so tree car music perfume or ice cream whatever so you can see them all right you can 
touch them all so they are the things that make our senses go right wow so these are concrete nouns concrete means which has a shape which you can see which you can touch and then we will come to the next kind of a noun which is very very important abstract noun so let's us uh, take a step into the world of ideas into the world of concepts with abstract nouns these nouns actually represent things that you cannot physically perceive so we are talking about emotions we are talking about qualities or ideas so imagine words like love like happiness justice and you know freedom knowledge so they are in our mind they exist in our minds and hearts even if we cannot touch them they are existent they are there in our mind of course so it is very very important abstract noun next kind of a noun is countable and uncountable nouns so here is where things get a bit numerical some nouns are you know countable which means you can count individual items you have got singular nouns or singular form or plural forms like book that means one book uh, books that means many books right so but then we have uncountable nouns as well so uh, these are you know substances or concepts or ideas that you cannot count individually they are considered as you know singular like water advice information or furniture so you they, they are uncountable noun you can have more or less of them but you cannot put a number on them okay so these are uncountable noun uncountable means which cannot be counted now next kind of a noun is of course collective nouns and uh, let's gather round here for collective nouns because these kind of nouns refer to groups refer to uh, the collections of people the collection of animals or things they are like you know a single entity made up of uh, multiple individuals or multiple objects so try to imagine words like family right in a family there are many members right and many members constitute a family so a family a team a team of players suppose a family of members a herd of cattle a herd of elephants and then of course flock audience these all are uh, collective nouns because here it is the, the, each of the words uh, they are referring to some kind of group some kind of collection right so it's all about the power of togetherness so these all are collective nouns now next uh, noun is of course compound nouns nouns formed by combining two or more words right so it is time to mix things up with compound nouns so these nouns are made by combining two or more words to create a brand new noun with its own special meaning we have uh, got closed compounds like notebook okay where two words become one without any spaces there is no space between note and book okay it is only one word without any space so this is closed compound remember this and then we have high you know hyphenated compounds where there is a hyphen in between right like mother in law mother in law after mother you have a hyphen and then after in you have another hyphen so mother in law where the words are joined together with hyphens right and finally we have open compounds open compounds like post office because here the words remain separate but still they work together to form a noun okay it is only one noun though the words are uh, separated from each other right so these are what noun these are open compounds open compounds so compound nouns are also very important and they are like word mass ups right and they can be a lot of fun so hyphenated uh, compound closed compound and open compound if you are asked in an examination you must remember these things so that you can put it correctly now the next point the next part is possessive nouns okay possessive you all know what it means possessive means you know kind of ownership 
and it's time to talk about this particular ownership with possessive nouns and these nouns show that something belongs to someone or that is you know that particular thing is related to someone or to to uh, some people in some way right so to form a possessive noun we simply add an apostrophe right um, and and uh, an s of course to the noun for example sarah's book here you get an get an example sarah's book so after sarah we are putting an apostrophe and after that an s right apostrophe s and that tells us that the book belongs to sarah so it's all about showing that particular connection that particular special connection dog's tail that means the tail is belonging to the dog now moving uh, moving on next kind of a noun is of course noun forms and genders these are also very important gendered kind of nouns okay noun forms and gender you know singular and plural forms are there of nouns so nouns can come in different forms uh, either singular or plural right? plural right so singular nouns represent just one item while plural nouns represent more than one right so forming plurals can be a piece of cake for you it is very very easy a regular plurals usually just need an s or es nothing nothing else right and if you add them to the singular noun then it becomes plural like cat if, if you put s after that it becomes cats and box if you add es after that then it becomes boxes then it, it becomes plural right so you have to watch out uh, the irregular plurals as well where only s or es will not work right like see as a child child uh, becomes children in plural these are irregular or mouse becomes mice you all know that right so they like to break the rules every a, a, a particular uh, in a particular way a bit so these are the forms of noun now let us talk about gendered nouns then now gendered nouns also can be found in some languages it is specific to some languages only right like in languages um, like Spanish or French noun can be classified as masculine feminine or neuter okay they can classify they can categorize the nouns to be masculine suppose dog they, they um, like the Spanish people they call the dog el perro e l p e r r o el perro and it is of course masculine in spanish you have to remember them so in some languages uh, you can of course take examples of spanish and french nouns can be classified as feminine as masculine or neuter okay so that actually doesn't mean that the nouns are a physical gender but rather it's a grammatical feature in their languages right i have already given you an example el perro in spanish uh, the dog that means and it is of course masculine and the cat that is called in spanish la gata okay l a um, then g a t a la gata that means the cat it is feminine in spanish okay so it is very important to note this particular thing as well that not all languages have gendered nouns you have to remember this right in some languages only there are some gendered nouns and this particular idea of gender representation in language is is you know coming is evolving day by day we'll very soon get these things in our hand right so uh, there you have it folks today up to this thank you very much and today we have taken a deep dive into the nouns and it and its different types uh, i have already told you that nouns are of course the building blocks of language that helps us to uh, express uh, people express places things and ideas and we explored various kinds of nouns like concrete nouns that tickle our senses the abstract nouns that that live in our minds and hearts countable and uncountable nouns that handle of course numbers and then collective nouns that brings groups together and compound nouns that uh, you know makes things off and of course possessive nouns that show the ownership 
right so understanding these particular nouns and their various types can can greatly enhance our ability to communicate effectively uh, they can enhance our ability to express ourselves clearly and above all which is very very important it will make you able to crack the gate exam to some extent for sure so keep exploring keep learning and have fun playing with all these wonderful nouns thanks for joining me in this lecture on noun and its different types thanks for choosing rsgis home once again as your learning partner and get ready to elevate your english skills with me and show to new heights thank you catch you next time thank you very much